This is our second session now on 1 Timothy 1, 3-5. Paul says to this younger intern, you might say, of his, whom he has left behind at Ephesus as the pastor or leader, as I urged you when I was going to Macedonia to remain at Ephesus so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies which promote speculations rather than God's stewardship or God's household plan that is by faith. And he breaks off the sentence there. Um, in the ESV and other translations, they smooth it out by taking away this infinitive structure here and simply saying, as I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus. And so they make it a complete sentence. But in the original, this is an infinitive, and it says, as I urged you when I was going to Macedonia to remain at Ephesus and so on. And he gets here and he never does supply the main verb. This is not unusual for Paul. Things get long, and he decides, I'm going to launch right into the most important statement, and you can, you can supply the necessary verbs very easily, and he knows that. As I urge you when I was going to Macedonia to remain at Ephesus so that you might charge, and so on. It's the meaning is clear, even if his way of writing it was um, incomplete. The aim of the charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. Father, we want very much to realize the aim here of the charge. We want to be people who love from a a pure heart, and a good conscience and sincere faith. So I pray that you would work this faith in us, that you would purify our hearts, and that you would keep our consciences clear so that everything results in this love. And show us how that fits, how that's coherent and essential in Paul's big purpose here for Timothy, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So the charge that he is leaving Timothy with here is, first, mainly negative, not to teach different doctrine, not to devote themselves to myths, not to devote themselves to endless genealogies. This word endless, I think, is very important here because it contrasts with aim or telos, goal, end. It doesn't go anywhere. These these things don't go anywhere. They just get further and further confusing and speculative, so not speculations, rather than, and here comes the positive of what this charge involves, rather than God's stewardship. Now, that's not a clear phrase for most of us in English. The, the Greek word oikonomion Uh, means either a household plan, which is what I think it means here, or the implementing and doing what the steward or the manager of the household plan does. So these other doctrines, these myths, these endless genealogies, and the resultant uh, speculations that never land on anything solid, anything sure, they don't promote God's stewardship. And that that word promote there is important because it implies Paul wants the effect of ministry and doctrine and thinking to go somewhere and promote something which corresponds to this aim here. So this promote corresponds to that aim. Paul has an aim he, he has something he wants to promote, and what he wants to promote is first expressed in terms of stewardship, God's household plan for the church. 
That word, oikonomian, is used, for example, in Ephesians 3, 8 to 10. To me, though I was the very least of the saints, this grace was given, Paul says, to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan. There it is, that same word of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. God has a household plan for his house, his household, the church. Or here it is again in Ephesians 1. God made known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan, a household plan, same word, for the fullness of time to unite all things in Christ, in him, things in heaven and things on the earth. So his, his aim first is expressed in terms of everything that's done in the church, Timothy, should advance and promote the household plan of God. And then he says the all-important defining essence of that plan, that is by faith. These false doctrines and these myths and these genealogies and these speculations are not building people's solid rock confidence in Jesus. They're they're causing all kinds of fascinations that never go anywhere. I've met people like this, and you ask them about their speculations and their um, vague ideas, and and you say, where's that going, though? What's it doing? And they look at you like, "Well, well, that's not the point. They're just interesting. That's Paul's problem. He doesn't like that kind of mindset. And then he restates what he's trying to promote. He wants to promote the household plan of God, which is by faith. And he breaks off and he defines it. The aim of the charge, and that charge right there is this charge. In other words, the aim of everything I've been saying here, warning you what to do and what not to do and what to do, The aim of that charge, or the thing I'm really trying to promote, can be described not just in terms of God's stewardship, but in terms of love. The aim, the goal, where you can really land and bite down on something solid and sure, the aim of the charge is love. Now, where does love come from? Three things, he says. It issues from a pure heart pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. So relate that sincere faith as the source of love to faith as the source or the essence of the stewardship. You see that? He wants to promote God's household plan, and you do that by faith. That is, he wants to promote love in the church, and the heart of how you do it is faith. It comes from, and then he mentions three things, pure heart, good conscience, sincere faith. And I think sincere faith is the root of these two. You can see that, for example, in Acts 15.9. He made no distinction between us and them, us Jews and those Gentiles, having cleansed, same word, purified their hearts by faith. So when I say that sincere faith here is more more basic and fundamental and it's the spring of this pure heart, that's one of the reasons I, I see that. Here's another one. 1 Peter one twenty two. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth. And the truth there is the gospel and obedience is faith. That's the way you obey the gospel. You believe. The gospel says believe. You obey believing that command to believe by believing. By obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another from a pure heart. So you see the sequence here. First comes faith, that is obedience to the truth. That yields a pure heart. And that yields love. 
love one another from a pure heart. So back here, I'm arguing that faith comes first, then the heart is pure, then love abounds. And this is the aim of the charge, which is this. So the aim, clean it up here, the aim of everything that he has said here, not different doctrine, not myths, not endless genealogies, not speculations, the aim of all of that charge is love. Or, to say it another way, it is the advancement of God's household plan. And both of them, the love and the household plan, come from faith. And we're going to see this over and over again in 1 Timothy. The relationship between faith and a good conscience, which is, I think, how you maintain the felt experience of the pure heart and love. Love and faith are paired up at least five times in this letter. So keep in mind now as the possibility that this statement here could be the thesis statement, you might say, or the main statement of the whole book. And he enlarges this to say it is the entire household plan of God. And he's, of course, treating the church as the household, and he's going to call elders, stewards, household keepers in Titus 1 7 for an overseer, an elder, a pastor, as God's household manager must be above reproach, and so on. So this is going to be a key word as the church is viewed as God's house. The pastors are viewed as the managers of the house. The stewardship of the house is going to be built by faith, and the essence of that stewardship is going to be love, all of it rooted in a faith yielding a pure heart and a good conscience.